Welcome to Studio One Live. I'm Hey Rude the Guru, and this is Rude Radio. I know every town the same, every place I go. People tell their stories about the. <laughs> we will roast your program. <laughs> and all YouTubers and content creators alike. <laughs> Kong TV! You got human beings are fucking horrible creatures. You are a fucking liar, bro. You are a liar. Not the colonizers. Then we may be talking. I knew it was coming. It's It's what we are, right? It's not what we are. When we were kids, what did we do when we found an insect? Pull off its legs, you pull out its wing. We never did that. Sick white boys do that. It hurt my heart one day. I tried to catch a lizard. I put a glass over him thinking I was just going to keep him. And he suffocated. The lizard suffocated. And he was a skeleton when I came back. And I was devastated. I, I I That was something I would never do again. And my grandson, who loves lizards, he catches lizards, play with them. He- Let me see what you got there now. Look at that. Hey. What, what is it? Baby lizard. Oh, Look wow. at it. Look at the baby lizard. Wow. So- Look at it. I found it. How you, how you found that? I know, because it's tiny. It's, it's tiny. I know it. I can't even see that. Your eyes must be really good. Look, don't let the dog, you know the dog and I ate two lizards the other day. Can't let them kill the lizards. You're a killer. This one's a kill lizard. This is a baby lizard. Where do you find it at? In the phone. He likes all the bugs. And he don't tear off the wings or legs of these bugs. And I had to teach my grandson the pain I went through with that lizard to let him know. Okay, you're catching these lizards, but remember, you, you're you're putting them in jail. He's like, no, they're not in jail. I said they can't escape. They want to. They don't want to be trapped in your little toy box. <sighs> you burn it with a magnifying glass, unless he's nodding his head. It's what you fucking do. I didn't do these things. I just want to be really clear. Would you that. like? Oh, I didn't do these things either, buddy. He's lying on the human race. I'm with you. To verbalize the sick things that were unique to you, because you can share those if you like, I'm sure. Are you one of the people- Pulling off animal legs and Are you one of the people that looks at your own poop? Is that what you are? Are you one of the people- I've looked at my own shit before. Are you one of the people that maybe smells your- I looked at my own shit before. And also, more recently, learning that you could tell your health condition by the look of your poop. That doesn't make us sick and horrible humans. You know, your toenail clippings? Are you one of those people? They have a smell. (laughs) <laughs> just people have weird tendencies that you could not imagine what's weird about checking out your own body parts excretions and stuff that is a part of you understanding yourself that doesn't make you a horrible human being hmm. there's stuff that makes it so that like the guy like dude just just look at how many varieties of and that oh, gives you an idea yeah. of how di- and that's only sexual and they're not even perversions those are just a variety of sexual interests we're not even in like sexual perversions or illegal sexual perversions or in- and that's all within the realm of sex not the realm of pain or the realm of uh, yeah. of deception or the realm of physical abuse like you can imagine how much sickness there is when it comes to the way that human beings find things curious, because that's what we're really talking about, is just curiosities that are labeled to be sick because we live in a world of right and wrong. Right. So do I think that it's more likely that some foreign government identified a 23-year-old black hip-hop artist who was in charge of a label that was failing and turned him into a powerhouse art <coughs> No, sir. Uh-uh. ...artist who... Let's rewind this. Vladimir Putin and give him a pet, no background, no connection, unproven, 
was going to be, if, if CIA was going to be involved, yeah, it God. wouldn't be involved in a domestic, unknown, unproven rapper. Hold on. Unknown, unproven rapper. Hold on, bro. The CIA would be involved because we saw some CIA documents involving Biggie Smalls, involving Tupac Shakur, also involving the weaponization of hip hop music and causing an, a divide and conquer technique. East Coast versus West Coast, gangster rap, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. CIA is behind that. In the what 90s, 80s? When, I didn't say when did CIA, it all start? By the way, I want to be clear about that. Whoever, right? If 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 U.S. government was going to somehow get funding, you think it's foreign government? Like it could be. If if any government was going to try to build influence, it wouldn't try with a, with what you just painted to be quite a loser. Right? It would see. He tried to use his own words to substantiate his argument. You painted him as a loser. Well, how could he be a loser? Maybe he misrepresented him. Maybe he wasn't a loser. Maybe he was smart. He had to have some smartness to start this uh, bad boy entertainment records and get all these rappers and make the money he made, or. He was placed in that position, as this host suggests. But he's saying, see, I would never do it. He's a never lie. Couldn't start with somebody who's unproven, who's got no skills, no background, no connections, and then try to build that person up? That's not how it works. That's not how any good op works. You find somebody who's already on the rise. You find somebody who's already established. Hold on, sir. You're CIA formerly, right? You know it's a need to know basis. So you wouldn't know half the things CIA is involved in. I could guarantee that. And I'm giving you a modest estimate of 50%. So you don't know what the CIA would do, sir. Like, you don't bet on a losing horse, especially not with big, big money. They wouldn't be betting on a losing horse because Puffy Combs became practically a billionaire. That's not quite a losing horse. Now, as far as his transgressions that got him in this situation, now that might be a losing horse, but... In the hopes that 15, 30 years from now, it's going to pay off in some sort of intelligence world. What if he's the in, though? And it's more the people around him are the people who are maybe more reliable, but he's the in because he's the face of it. Again, the useful idiot is high. That's, that's, that's an access agent. What you're talking about is an access agent. A useful idiot is somebody like fucking what's his name that did the interview with Putin. Tucker? Tucker Carlson. That's he's a useful, useful idiot? idiot? Oh, I was... That whole interview he had with Putin, all that interview did was take Vladimir Putin and give him a pedestal with the entire conservative part of the United States. Now that, I agree with you, sir. Listen, I'm on true side. I'm not on your side. I'm not on my side. I'm on the truth side. And that, to me, seems to be truthful. Because, or at least... I see it the way you see it in that situation. Because Tucker Park Carlson displayed to the world how much stronger Russia president was than our president, Joe Biden. And Putin could sit there and say whatever he wanted to say. And he could look strong and he could look eloquent and he could look intelligent. And he can give a full history lesson on Russia. And he could look confident. He could choose what the talking points were that he talked about. And he had a voice to the entire conservative nation. A voice. That was a brilliant move on Putin's part. Are you well, saying Tucker lost the moment he walked into the room? 100%. The moment he, the moment he showed up. I, I agree again. You don't think they were Russia 
Putin, Putin, or however you pronounce his name, Vladimir Putin, Putin, Vladimir Putin, probably. You think he would have let or allowed a journalist from America to come to the country without already having their uh, narrative set in place and how they wanted to go? Come on, bud. Come on. He lost. And then lost. the whole... He lost. I mean, if you want to have a fucking phenomenal conversation, we should just take that whole interview play by play and disassemble it. And it's disassemble all one it. one giant, powerful... You know what? Influence can He's right. I started a reaction video to it, and it was so long, I didn't finish it. I must dig that out of my archives and see what it is. Uh-oh. Okay, cool. Let's go. Oh, Putin's a master, man. He's you awesome to watch. You can't argue that. He's awesome to watch and just... Well, it sounds like you're putting him on the pedestal as well. So, is that why you saw it the way you saw it? Because you feel like he's what you're saying right now? And you feel like that was portrayed to the world because you see him as that? I don't know if you're biased now, but I still agree with you. It's incredibly skilled. But so Carlson was the avenue by which Putin could get to the Republican or the conservative base of the United States. That makes Tucker the useful idiot. I he, see what you're saying. That's what a useful idiot. An access agent is more of what you're talking about. Somebody who has a connection with people. And if you want the connection that they have, you have to go through them to get the introduction. But once you get the introduction, you kind of cut them out. You cut them out. So you the information coming out on Diddy and what he did and how he carried out his parties and what information he collected and what his interests were, there's no reason at all for us to think that that's unique. That's just one person in the music industry. Yeah. Imagine the film industry pro sports industry, corporate oil industry, big tobacco industry. You name the industry, right? The rule of thumb at CIA is that every time you catch a mole, you have to assume there's two more. So when you catch a mole, a penetration inside your agency, when you catch a Robert Hansen, an Aldrich Ames, yep. a Jerry Lee, you have to assume there's at least two more because the one that you got in the one that was there is the one that you caught, and the one that you caught, if, if they're, whoever's handling them is running at least two so that they can always have informants about the other. So I understand. That, right? Yeah. So if we caught one from the music industry, there's probably two more. And then if there are three in the music industry, it's probably three in the tobacco industry, probably three in the electronic, the electric uh, vehicles industry. There's probably three in the social media industry. There's probably three in the uh, big alcohol, big beer industry, right? Like rich people yeah. are connected to other rich. So are you saying every time you catch one, there's two more to be caught? Because if you're saying, okay, there's three more, if you catch those three, then that's it. Or as you catch each one of those three, that adds three more possibilities. What you're saying is, there's an almost an exponential amount of the bullshit to be caught. Rich people, they have rich people problems, which average people can't even fucking conceptualize. Yeah. And to your government intelligence services, why would you talk to a normal fucking person with no value and no access and no network when you could always get your ass in front of a politician, a famous musician, an actor, a senior executive? Like, it's not hard to get in front of one of those people when you are an intelligence officer. And those people are guaranteed to have access to information that can be useful in your... Hold on, so... It's not a problem for a CIA intelligence officer to get himself in front of these people. Then I'm not so sure about your saying the CIA 
has no involvement or would never get itself involved in the rapper. Okay. I don't know about never. Okay. And to me now, I'm looking at it. This sounds like uh, someone's narrative campaign. Because he's pointing the picture back on. Remember. Uh, the Clinton emails. Remember. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Or whatever his name is. Remember uh, Weinstein. Remember all these people. And they keep. Uh, insinuating that they're going to expose them. Or someone's going to expose them. Now I'm seeing a lot of information out there saying that Diddy is about to expose some folks. One thing I do know is a lot of people, I ain't going to say a lot, but the main ones that have been in the limelight about exposure seemingly ended up dead own endeavors to collect and manipulate and influence foreign countries foreign elections foreign media yeah no it's look points well taken and that's that's interesting that that that's like the rule they're putting it in a law of three so you got three dimensions automatically if you catch one there's two there <laughs> catch one there's two more I don't, I don't know. Uh, you're a narrative campaigner. They've put you out here to campaign on a narrative, my buddy. It's no, I mean, I've watched several of your videos. I was kind of intrigued on the information you, you were bringing out there. And I was wondering, initially, I said, dang, would the CIA just let him tell all this about how they operate they probably don't even operate nowhere like that now you know they probably don't change a lot but i was wondering about him and did the cia plant him to talk about certain issues get him a big following build him up now you're the built up guy so they may never go to a rapper, but they may go to a former employee like this guy, former CIA, and can narrative campaign on YouTube. I don't know this to be true because I haven't looked at all the videos he done put out there, but from the few that I've seen, and the talking points on this one, it leans me to wonder about it at least. I am not making a judgment, but I am wondering. Did the CIA prep you up and got you on a narrative campaign? As you so mentioned that the CIA would never do that for a rapper, an unproven one, and don't believe Diddy or any of this stuff that he's involved in has anything to do with the CIA. I don't believe it either. But to say they will never, I got a rule of thumb. Anytime someone uses the word never, always, they might be, or most of the time, they're wrong or they're lying to you to try to get you to believe something so when they tell you never and always they probably are lying and they want you to believe what they're saying so listen to what they're saying and if you could understand why they want you to believe it you have the upper hand 